agree i agree uh, there was some fault from our side also that the common indian citizen also um, forgot wearing mask and they thrown the social distancing norm and forgot about the uh, hand hygiene i think that overall um, most of us have had issues not just with covid-19 physical but also trying to figure out what do we do for children uh, what happened in india is common sense went out of the window from the government and from the population so good evening good afternoon everybody so we are here today in the round 2 for the event doctors without borders for rural india platform that we are connecting the rural patients rural people that who can get the direct access to a doctors especially in this pandemic situation we are just uh, here with the doctors not only from india also from the different part of the world so i'll just introduce one by one dr ariel ariel is with us from geneva and she is a public health expert dr Uh, Hafiz Ibrahim is from UAE Abu Dhabi he is working on the neonatology and infant baby and also he'll talk about the uh, different things about the infant babies and how to take care about them we have dr hasina she is a clinical health specialist as well as from a homeopath background she will be talking about the good part of the homeopathic that how it can be helpful for uh, in this kind of situation where the very scarcity of healthcare healthcare facilities and all so we have to understand different aspects and we have dr dashleen kaur and she will be talking on the mental stress she is from the psychiatric department more speaker we have from the general medicine dr mohammad shahaba we are going to begin this uh, round session i will i'll ask dr ariel dr ariel from geneva she will be starting this session dr ariel i just hand over to you thank you so much and it's really a, uh, a pleasure to be here today with all of you to start speaking about covid-19 and issues about children and youth i think that overall um most of us have had issues not just with covid-19 physical but also trying to figure out what do we do for children um how does it relate to children what are the symptoms in children what do we need to do and look for and of course um as a result of covid-19 many children find themselves uh at home not in school not in a formal program not in a formal setting of training and so on and so forth so then we have the added issues of especially those that are a little older that are teens the psychological issues and the emotional issues of being away from um, the most important people to them which is their friends and their acquaintances um building their lives and even feeling that their lives have been put on hold and uh, as a result many of them have thought about and have seen their friends uh, think about literally ending their lives i think that when we start looking at this when it comes to children i think we should make it quite clear that children are not many adults and young people are not many adults as a result of their bodies and um the physiology and their developing as young people it's really important for us to start to really understand what are some of the uh issues for young people and children what are um some of the issues around vaccinations for example because children are not many adults um what are the long term implications for example for vaccinations what are the symptoms in children which might be different from adults uh, even more importantly some of the those who have had covid who have had the more extreme covid that are still um feeling the effects of covid what are those and all of our experts are going to be talking about all of these issues today um almost all of us have some children uh, if not uh, if not children that are ours nieces nephews cousins in our families and all of them have been affected and i think that what's quite interesting is when we've actually had such a difficult time uh with with and we still do with with covid raging that children and youth are thought of later and that's understood um but today we're going to do our best with all of our experts here speaking about issues specifically for children and youth so um with that very short introduction that doesn't give much information i'm going to rely on the experts to start talking about the various issues uh that are quite important for this subject and we have a whole host of uh, wonderful professionals who are on today that will be able to fill in the 
the uh, various issues of children, youth, and COVID-19. So thank you very much for this. And I'm also looking forward to hearing all of my colleagues and um, all the information that you have to give us today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ariel. Uh, it was a good beginning for all the people that they had the now understanding about what we are going to talk about. So I'll just request Dr. Asina, you know, because I want to uh, change the trend about that, you know, with last uh, last session, we were focusing only on the allopathy and all. So we wanted to hear from her that how homeopathy can be uh, beneficial in this kind of pandemic. Is, this, is there are any examples that we can hear from her that uh, there are positive signs that, you know, the people are getting cured or they are getting, you know, the good, uh, good support from the homeopathic medicines. So Dr. Asina, over to you, please. Good evening, Rata Shahid. Am I audible? Am I yes, audible? Sir. Yes, yes, you are audible. Nice chat? Yeah. Thank you. So good evening from India, my dearest soul sisters and brothers from across the globe. Yes, sister, that's what Dr. Shahid Siddiqui called me and he invited me to as a speaker on this platform, adorned with the most distinguished personalities. Even when I'm not representative of the healthcare system, which is working endlessly to tackle the most perilous times of this millennium, I'm simply honored to be sharing the space with all you distinguished speakers, and especially Dr. Kafil Khan, whom I'd always wanted to salute and thank from the bottom of my heart, especially as I'm from Korikur, where the Nipah virus came and he, just extended his services, even with all that he had to face in his life. So again, a big thank you and uh, namaste from me to all the speakers and the wonderful people who are with us today. So I can witness the collective intention to impart healing to ailing humanity here, forgoing all constraints of narrow ego clashes and intolerance between systems of medicine. By the simple fact that I am invited to share my take on COVID-19 as a homeopathic physician. Even when a large portion of the scientific community stamped us, stamped it as a pseudoscience. I even tried to back off when Dr. Shahid invited me to be a speaker, but he told me, we are looking to give relief to the Indian population, especially the rural Indian population, which is going from bad to worse each passing day. And we at MSF are open to anything in everything which can be of value to these helpless ailing victims of COVID. At least you could speak about the preventive aspects of the disease from your knowledge. And here I am. Thank you, my dear brother, Dr. Shahid, Emerson, and Akra for encompassing this wonderful spirit of humaneness and universal love. Salute from the bottom of my heart. So before I go into the topic, may I take a few moments to enlighten you about my serendipitous journey till now so that my presence here is justified, both for me as well as all of you here. So I began my journey of life aspiring to be a physician, in fact, a gynecologist, from the moment I learned to dream. And my distinguished father, Dr. K.P. Mahmoodi, was all support. He was the pioneer of the self-financing educational system and computerization in our state. And he's my eternal hero who taught me the value and importance of true education, not mere degrees. And when the medical entrance results came back in 1990, I couldn't get into an MBBS course. Thanks to a nasty migraine that I, migraine headache I had been suffering from the seventh grade. The reason why I couldn't perform well at the test. And I was eligible only to get into the homeopathic medical college. My last and least choice, because it was a system of medicine which was stamped fake and never had any acceptance in society, not dignity. I outrightly refused to join the college. My father literally dragged me by the year and enrolled me for the course, for which I'm eternally grateful to him till this point. He's no more. So when I entered my first lecture on the philosophy of homeopathy, skepticism and hatred lit, writ large on my countenance. But after the one hour, I was head over heels in love with the basic concepts of the system, which promises radical, radical cure not just treatment or management of diseases, both acute and chronic. So I started devouring my lessons with enthusiasm. And the next year, when my younger brother bagged the first few ranks of all the medical entrances across the country, 
and got enrolled at Jigma Pondicherry, one of the most prestigious medical schools of the country, I felt no envy or regret my decision to follow homeopathy. But again, one year later, I contracted a mild seasonal flu. And being so much in faith of the theory of homeopathy, I approached one of my teachers in college. She treated me for that influenza. And in a week, I was admitted to an allopathic hospital with advanced pneumonia. 24 days between consciousness and faintness, I recovered under the loving care of my mother, who's a born healer, and all the wonderful physicians at the hospital. At the end of which, I even lost my knee-length hair I was so proud of, and with not a semblance of energy left in me. I was disillusioned, flabbergasted, confused, even ashamed to say that I'm a student of homeopathy. I lost interest in my studies, and I was ridiculed by everyone, including my genius brother for accepting that system uh, for, a, for a disease, so acute disease, which turned into pneumonia, a simple influenza, which turned into pneumonia. I knew not what to do with this life, but had to tag along like a log, as I had already crossed the marriageable age, <laughs> as was the norm in our society 28 years back, you see. So I started even bunking classes and uh, never took any interest in my studies after that. That was when a Messiah-like teacher joined our college a young vibrant doctor called Dr. Ajay Kumar Babu, who hit us like a raft of fresh air uh, to the gas, gasping, sinking generation of students. He started demonstrating the possibilities of homeopathy in every patient that came to the OP, both acute and chronic. So infused with a ray of hope, I personally approached him with my migraine, still skeptical, but to my utter amazement, he gave me two powders and I never got a headache for six months at a stretch. I was free of the analgesics, which I was taking five to six per day. And then I got another mild attack six months later. He gave me two more powders and I've never had a migraine attack till date. It is 2021. That was way back in 1993. That's how I totally surrendered before this macromanic knowledge and started following all his cases, even when I was posted in other OPDs and IPDs. And I witnessed the miracle of his grace when a 65-year-old lady was cured of her cervical cancer in 1993 and lived up to 2007 before succumbing to natural causes of death in old age. So from 1993 to this moment, I've been traveling with this incredible teacher of mine to make our dreams of establishing an institution to impart true healing to humanity, adhering to the principles of homeopathy become a reality, which we did ultimately. I realized that the system never fails, but the torch bearers of the system can fail if not fully equipped with the knowledge and of all the principles as happened in my case where my flu turned into pneumonia. So finally, our dream of a 60 bedded hospital and a homeopathic pharmacy school, the first of its kind in our state, came into being, which was met with lots of resistance from the bureaucracy and even from our own fraternity a reason why I could totally resonate with what Dr. Kafil Khan had to undergo in this country of ours. But as principal and chief medical officer of the institution, I got all the freedom to pursue my dreams and take forward the visions of my teacher. And under his angelic guidance, we could conduct prophylactic studies in almost all the epidemics that came in the state and find encouraging results. Our IPD and OPD flooded with patients from different parts of the state and abroad and we had a whole bag of successful healing stories of all diseases, in fact, many a times stamped manageable or incurable by modern concepts of medicine. For example, autoimmune disorders, cancer, SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, sickle cell anemia, to name a few. So prophylaxis with the unique concept of genus epidemicus, which I'll be explaining later in, in our sessions, in all epidemic diseases was immensely su successful. The greatest proof being my only son of 25 years who has never had an epidemic all his life and never had an antibiotic or any other medicine from any other system except when he had to undergo a surgery for his radius fracture. fracture. So my brother, who later passed out from PGI Chandigarh as a gold medalist and went on to become one of the best neonatologists in the world, he and me would fight <laughs> when my son was was a child and he used to get ill. I was also naive and adamant enough to stick onto my system of medicine and prove that it can cure any catastrophe. While he would rush in with his injections, drips, 
which I would resist like anything and prove that homeopathy is capable of managing even a one or five degree fever or debilitating diarrhea. Actually, it was not my fight with him. It was my fight with my own insecurities and reservations. How could, how could I take on a system where I couldn't believe? So 25 years later, that brother is my greatest pillar of support and we collaborate in each and every case in our family and suggest what is best for them for that given state of disease. We, re we realize that allopathy and homeopathy both have their own advantages and limitations, which we understood as we matured. And that's how we could take care of our father who succumbed to morbidities like normal pressure hydrocephalus, cardiac failure, stroke, diabetes, dementia, and whatnot. We could manage all those emergencies with our combined effort. And even when I had the first stage of Ukraine cancer and an adrenal failure, he gave me the space to try out homeopathy before taking lifelong hydrocortisone or a hysterectomy or chemotherapy, pitching in whenever I needed an assistance. So this Superman brother, my hero, is none other than Dr. Hafiz Ibrahim, who is present here with us today. So I take this opportunity to salute and thank him on this public platform, which I've never done personally. You know how it is with family. <laughs> we never acknowledge personally. So. Thank you, brother. So I wish if this scenario of my family could be extrapolated to our global family, and if integration of medical systems could be made a rea reality, taking the good of all and collaborating with each other, this could be realized. We would be swimming in a conspiracy, universal love, peace, harmony, imparting real and lasting cures in all diseases faced by humanity tapping into the potentials of all indigenous systems unique to every country and using it in conjunction with the mainstream, which obviously is allopathy, the lifesaver. So coming to the topic of COVID, the first case in India was reported in January 2020, as we all know. And we at our end, from my hospital side and my institution side and from Dr. Ajay Gumar's side, we started our prophylaxis campaign with the drug Arsenicum album which was found to be the genus epidemicus in COVID after compiling and analyzing the symptoms from across the globe. It was also uh, advocated by the Ayush Ministry, that is the Ministry for Alternative Systems of Medicine in India. Me, my family, patients, and friends all took it regularly. We distributed it to thousands in our vicinity, including the police force and families in my neighboring district. Those officers who were exposed to COVID at the plane crash in Calicut International Airport and the results was really encouraging. Very few got infected, and those who also those who got infected also recovered with the same medicines with no complications at all. Vaccinations hadn't started then, so we could observe that all those who took arsenic album in the correct dosage and frequency were totally protected from the disease. And even they got the disease, they were cured with the same drug. But those who were irregular or were not taking the correct dose of potency got infected, but even then they recovered in a jiffy with minimum symptoms and complications. So that's how I got my first case in my own family. My pregnant niece and her family in Muscat, her in-laws, her husband, and her child. She was eight months pregnant and she had only an old stock of Astical with, with her, which she had taken from me two years back and she had no access to fresh medicine or higher potencies in that country. So she even delivered prematurely due to the fever and cough. But fortunately, there was a friend traveling from India to Muscat, and I could send the medicine through them. And all five of them, her in-laws, husband, and elder son, got negative in less than a week. Obviously, the newborn was spared, as we learned from Dr. Hafiz's studies, which he has published in a British journal, that the newborns are protected by the mother's antibodies. So then I started getting connected to many of my friends and clients here in India and abroad, being part of a worldwide community of Helio Life teachers. I have friends from different parts of the world. And in all those cases, I could assist with homeopathic drugs. Together with the cases of my sir, Dr. Ajay Gumar was handling at his place uh, as superintendent of the government homeopathic medical college, we were convinced of the effectiveness of homeopathy and even the treatment of positive cases. So not only prophylaxis, even in the treatment of positive cases. 
So Dr. Shahid, can, me, can I just have my PowerPoint so that I can show you a few lab reports of the successful cases, both mine and sir's, as evidence for what I'm claiming. Some of them came after taking conventional methods, some directly to homeopathy, but all recovered with no complications and hospitalizations. Can I have the PowerPoint, Dr. Shahid? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just So I've included around 15 cases uh, so that uh, I cannot include everything. So just 15 cases, so which we can see that all the lab reports which became negative in a matter of five to six days. So that was the first case. She was a friend, an acquaintance. Uh, it's a 50, 54 years old uh, female. And she was tested positive, uh, I think in March, uh, in March, in the beginning. And when she approached me, she was still positive. And she told me that she's not getting amelioration of the symptoms and the, the case was progressing. So we have, yeah. Did, did someone ask me something? Can I continue? Yes, yes, please, you continue. So it was like an intuitive contact. We hadn't connected for more than five years. She was not a patient. She was just a friend, which we had no contact. And I just got an intuitive thought to just call her. And she was telling me that, Hasina, I'm down with COVID and it's not getting negative. I'm just confined to the home supply, to my home since the past two weeks. So I said, if you have a homeopathic shop, just get to ask me to help 200. Take three doses per day for three days and get back to me on the fourth day with your report. And that's the report on the fourth day she was tested negative. So that was the first case that I treated apart from my family. And then came the next case is my sir's case and they are all here, both of them are here, and uh, they, don't, they don't even mind if I say their names, so then uh, even though the names are not there, then the, is it the second one, sir? Yeah, that's Subramaniam, sir, and Kaveri, a very old uh, acquaintance of ours, and they also, when COVID affected them, they forgot us. So again, there was that intuitive feeling that I just got connected to them, and Kaveri was telling me, what serendipity is? What divine, what divine intervention is this? Come on, we both are with, the hell. with COVID. It's fever, we have diarrhea, we cannot have food, we are going to die. I said, just call sir. And that's the medicine he prescribed, Carbovich 30. And you can see the result. Within a week, they both got negative. If you allow me, they'll be giving their testimonials if, you, if anybody here wants. So that was the second case. And the third one, uh, that's that's also that's Kaveri and Subramaniam there and now the fourth one those are from Delhi my HYL uh, colleague from Delhi and her husband was tested positive for pneumonia he was having antibiotics he was put on to steroids they even had vaccination yet he was going on to pneumonia and this SPO2 was just plummeting to 80 88 and they were just going to take him to hospital his wife, my friend, was mildly symptomatic and their daughter was asymptomatic. But again, it was during this wave and I found it very difficult to get them negative. It took almost 12 days, but at the end of which, he didn't have to go to a hospital. The pneumonia resolved on itself with our medicines. And Nithi, my friend, and her child, both of them, they also detected negative in a matter of one week. So these are just examples of some of the cases. There are around more than 15 cases. My SIRS case is also there with pure homeopathy and with in adjunction, adjunction with allopathy also. And you see, homeopathy can cure COVID is what I want to say to you. And at the end of this, uh, sir, you can just crawl it. You can see all the cases there. Yeah, that's one from North Paravur. Yeah, that's an 84-year-old old man. He was admitted in hospital. We gave medicines there. That's a 17 year old male. He was so sick, no other medicine, only homeopathy. That's his father. He was cured with thrust tox 1M. The next one, that's his, that was his mother, sorry. This is his father. He was also 
tested positive. He, he's in fact a homeopathic doctor himself. And these are some of the cases. And you can see the studies also, which I've included, which came across from all around the country and even abroad about the effectiveness of homeopathy. There are abstracts which I've added 15 or 16, just to substantiate that there are studies happening in homeopathy, but validation and uh, true acceptance is not being received around the world because it's still stamped a pseudoscience by the scientific community, not everybody, the major portion of the scientific community. So, as we all know, this is not the mainstream system of medicine and does not fall under the research protocols of ICMR or study models. None of them have been taken up by the governments. But the media in Kerala has popularized Dr. Ajay Kumar after one of his patients, an employee of a famous newspaper daily, Malayala Manorama, wrote about his miraculous journey from near death due to COVID with just five doses of homeopathic medicines under Ajay's guidance. So the media has just taken him up and uh, what do you call, uh, he's being skyrocketed to popularity everywhere around the state and he's getting calls from all around the world. But our intention is not just popularity. Our intention is not to get recognized personally or rather, uh, what do you call, prove ourselves. We want to be of service to the international or national uh, population who are suffering every day and death tolls, you know, they're getting, you know, uh, the statistics is going up every day. We would be happy if we could be of service to rural and not only rural India, anybody who is in need of an assistance. The recognition Dr. Ajay Gumar and me did not get in spite of proving ourselves in 28 years, presenting papers nationally and internationally in the Indian Science Congresses, International Science Congresses, on the efficacy of arsenic alb itself in initiating apoptosis in cancer cells, thrice in speed compared to storosporine, and the clinical evidences of PCOD and cancer. The recognition we didn't get that then is being given to us by just a post on the social media. So my plea to MSF and everybody here is if we could be of service to alleviate the sufferings of humanity, even to a small extent, if it could, take, could be taken up by any of the authorized bodies like the MSF or government, we would only be happy to pitch in and offer services both in manpower and financial assistance. That's the promise Dr. Ajay Gumar has asked me to make on this platform. And I plead and implore the scientific community to come up with an explanation as to how this medicine with literally no material particles of the substance can create such miraculous cures when administered as per the principle set down by a surgeon turned homeopath, Dr. Friedrich Samuel Hanneman, 200 odd years ago. We are not trained to do research or talk in the language of an epidemiologist or pathologist to explain what's happening behind this. And we have tried our best with our limits, within our limits, as you can see the multiple papers on the slides, but yet we have never been able to be truly get validated or be accepted by the existing scientific world. I close with the hope Galileo had when he was convicted for proclaiming that the earth revolved around the sun, whilst the then existing world denied it. Let the truth of homeopathy emerge from the whales of ambiguity and shine for the wider redemption of humanity. Thank you once again, Dr. Shahid, MSF, and Ekra for inviting me to this wonderful platform. And at last, and the last but not the least, I acknowledge Dr. Siju J. Sina, my friend homeopath who turned epidemiologist and is working with MSF who helped me throughout these presentations. I'm open to questions, which I'll try to answer from the limits of my knowledge. Uh, and uh, if uh, my patients and SIRS patients who are also here with us, if they've given a chance, they'll also give their experiences. Thank you so much once again. Good day. Dr. Hashia, thank you so much for the wonderful insights. In the beginning, at least, at least the people can understand that what are the things that positive sides of homeopath and the allopath, it has to go hand in hand. It should not be like, in, it should not be neglected in, in the, especially in, the, in this That's situation. Yeah. So, yeah, so Dr. Kafil has also entered. I'll just uh, introduce him again. 
and then we can take the questions what he uh, suggests so we can have the both allopathy and homeopathy remedies that all together like you did for your family that we also want the same thing that you can do justice to the rural indian people open to anything yeah thank you just just i just welcome dr kafil uh, here he has already joined and we were talking just now about Love dr kafil wanting to meet you for so long yeah dr kafil welcome so he is with us and uh, dr hasina was talking about you that how you helped in kerala the nipah virus you had offered your services to our chief minister i wanted to thank you from then and never got a chance to meet you <laughs> thank you so much and salute to all that you are undergoing and fighting you are muted dr kafil you are muted if you unmute yourself so i'll just introduce him that uh, for thank you dr hasina yes so, so i'll just introduce here dr ariel from geneva she is a senior public health expert Uh, she is with us uh, dr hafiz ibrahim from uae abu dhabi is also here with us dr asina you know that she is with us dr dasleen kaur she will be talking on the mental stress and all so uh, uh, i'll tell for the people that at least for ariel that if you know dr kafil khan if you google you can know everything so it's like he, he doesn't need any kind of introduction we everybody every child every person in india especially they know dr kafil khan if you tell they know the full history in famous dr kafil khan so and he has been so generous so kind everywhere in the crisis he was there not only uh, in any in, in his own state but other states also even wherever he was he was always even now he is doing some campaign doctors on the road so you can understand that he is going village to village and helping child in the crisis and all so and he is going to start even he will tell himself that he is going to start a live session also on sunday i have seen his uh, posting so i just want to just put it clear here that you know if anyone anybody wants to have the direct live consultation with him and maybe on sunday at 4 o'clock he will be available we would all like to pitch in yeah so so this is all in a brief just i'll just hand over to dr kafil that he starts with his journey as well as the few patients are also there they will be eager to they will be eager to have consultation with you hi everyone uh, this is dr kafil khan a uh, suspended lecturer biadi medical college gorakhpur assistant professor you can say um, i have been suspended for the past 4 year despite uh, high court supreme court and inquiry inquiry committee has cleared my name because our chief minister and me are good friend and and you know we like each other so much that uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, things are uh, <laughs> not that smooth you can say anyway forget about those things um i would just start uh, uh, maybe you people may knowing about me uh, uh, some people uh, i would just start saying that, that what happened in april and may uh, in delhi mumbai Uh, Ahmedabad, Chennai, Bangalore, Lucknow, Kanpur. Uh, it was like a acute deja vu situation for me. You know what I witnessed in BRD Medical College in to, uh, August 2017, where 63 children died in front of me, just gasping for oxygen. The same situation I saw all over India. people are struggling to get admitted in a hospital people are get is struggling to get oxygen gasping for oxygen and um, for drugs they are crying they are struggling so th this was a very horrible situation even the crematorium and graveyard was full and now we have seen how the rivers are throwing up the bodies uh, throwing up the um, uh, the falls uh, the the propaganda the data manipulation the government has done so we have failed in all aspect and i will tell why we have failed we have failed because of three reason one reason is that the government had itself itself uh, let down the guard you know they were they declared victory when my our health minister dr harshvardhan in december itself declared victory by saying that we have curtailed the disease 
when the when that time you know in november during the trump regime the us has seen the worst 4000 deaths in a day 3 lakh cases but still india didn't realize that we were more busy in election uh, and uh, we allowed large religious gathering and rallies the second part was administrative failure those people who are making policies the um, the ias lobbies i would not take the names they they were not taking uh, the help of uh, health activists or doctors they were more uh, dependent upon the administrative policies um, to cater the need of the government instead of the general citizen of india they went into pandemic fatigue or maybe you can say uh, they just went into sleep mode and third thing yes i agree i agree uh, there was some fault from our side also that the common indian citizen also um, forgot wearing mask uh, they thrown the social distancing norm and forgot about the uh, hand hygiene so these are the three lacks but the thing is that the government is still still you know trying to instead of correct the path is still trying to hide that there is so much data manipulation right now that you can't believe the the six mantra what everybody even w who is screaming and even i have written from the jail when, I, when the first wave was there i was in uh, prison and I, i from the prison on 19th of march i have written uh, to our uh, prime minister all about these th- six step the awareness program the the tracing the testing the treatment part the isolation and the vaccination these all uh, we, we have failed in all six uh, these aspects how many tests we are doing when who is saying that at least there should be 1 million tests per day uh, uh, in 100 million of population so out uh, when we have 1.4 billion population there should be at least 14 to 15 million tests per day but how many we are doing 1.5 million 2 million that's all that's all for the past one year how many beds how many oxygen uh, plants we have established the psa oxygen plant the pressure swing adsorption plant which was uh, approved by the government in april 2020 168 plant was approved in april 2020 8 month it took to clear the tender and uh, another four months to really establish and only five plant was established in even one year we talk about ventilator you all are doctors you know ventilator is not a toy and anybody can you know uh, start uh, you know or can run if you if you hand over to a inexperienced uh, health professional uh, a ventilator that is like a i think I, that is more dangerous in karnataka they they even dentist uh, were told to uh, run ventilator how can it is possible the intensive care uh, the society is saying that we have only 10000 doctors who can run ventilator i myself i know i uh, after 3 years of extensive training i know the how to run a ventilator you you have to change p you have to change pip you have to change fio2 on the basis of abg you have to done every 6 to 8 hours then come to the vaccination disaster the policy disaster 16th of january we announced the vaccination program and in april we celebrated vaccine utsav but where are the vaccine even after 4 5 m- months only 3% of population have got two doses and and only uh, uh, 10% have got uh, one dose and vaccine scarcity is so much that if you go to the any center uh, and if you book on covin app you will get even after one month you won't get any notice people have to buy and 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 when the 
with everything gone in mess, the, the, our prime minister, the central government has said that now the state government responsibility is to uh, buy vaccine and give it to the people. So now, now just imagine, like my, my Uttar Pradesh government, it's a babu dam, na? Now, now the IS lobby will sit with the Serum Institute of India. They will negotiate about the quantity. They can negotiate about the price, and that they will take months to clear the lockdown. I tell everyone, everyone. I am telling to the those people, in the the metro cities, those people who have suffered in April and May the shortage of oxygen, medicine, and bed. But I'm telling you, for the past 75 years, 75% of our Indian population is suffering from the same thing. Shortage of bed, shortage of oxygen, shortage of medicine, everything. If anything happened in the night in a, as an emergency in a village, far like in UP, Bihar, the Bimaru state, the Kaubel state, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, you won't get any doctor. You, you have to travel at least 200, 300 kilometers to uh, reach a tertiary care center to get a primary uh, um, uh, treatment. By the time you reach, you die. So, the, so um, I would just say that it's just, it, it's the statement saying that because of the COVID-19, our health system is exposed. No, uh, our health system is collapsed. No, it's, is, is, is COVID-19 has exposed our already collapsed health system. We are spending only 1.25% of GDP on health expenditure. And it's not about the Modi government. It's about the previous government also. For the past 75 years, each and every government has ignored the health issue. We have, we are the best, the largest manufacturing uh, facility in Kasoli. We make MMR uh, like Himachal Pradesh, Solan. We have uh, like BCG Gondai in uh, Chennai. We have uh, have have a uh, pasture institute in Tamil Nadu. Why we are not using when Bharat Biotech has got the uh, sharing from NIV and ICMR? Why the Bharat Biotech is not using the same? Uh, formula with the um, these manufacturing facility, the government manufacturing facility, and why not vaccine should be given free to each and every citizen? It's a pandemic. It's a global pandemic. I'm telling you what happened after Wuhan in China. The whole world suffered. So now, if India is bleeding, no country is safe. No country is safe. One other time that these people will travel and there will be other mutation and there will be other waves. Virus is a virus. It will mutate. There will be thousands of mutation and there will be hundreds of waves. This media frenzy about third wave, fourth wave, five wave, fifth wave. We should not worry about that. We should concentrate about the research and the vaccination policy. That's all I could say. Uh, I have started this uh, Health for All campaign in India. And uh, in 2019 itself, in January 2019, we launched with around 200 health uh, activists and doctors. And you know, these data are from UN, UNICEF, and WHO. Because Modi government is not giving data. And you will be uh, really surprised to know that what India health system is. WHO says that there should be one doctor, uh, one is to 1,000 doctor patient ratio. You know, India in, in India village, how much it is? One is to 51,000. Even though the government claim it is one is to 1,600, but that's, uh, they're talking about the uh, tier one city, like um, um, uh, metro cities. At Delhi, where is the ratio is one is to three hundred. But if it go to UP and Bihar, the um, proportion is one is to fifty one thousand. Every second female in India, not every second, seventy percent of uh, our female are anemic. Fifty percent of our children are uh, malnourished. 
India has become a diabetic capital of world. Every third person suffering with HIV and AIDS living in India. Five lakh people, 0.5 million people die of tuberculosis when tuberculosis is uh, no going going. Uh, so this is a very grave situation, and it's it's because it's because it's because those people who are dying they belong to poor marginalized community. Those who have money they can afford health facility, good health facility in a metro cities in a big hospital. 78% of our doctors working in an urban area, 78%. And they're taking care of 28% of population. So in that means the 72% of Indian population don't have health facility. So those with the greatest need, often they do not have health access. You will be surprised to know that India ranks 150th in female health and survival among uh, 153 countries. 150. 8.8 .8 lakh children die because of, you know, uh, this vaccine preventable disease. That means every hour 100 children are dying. We could have saved just to strengthen the primary health center, center. Primary health center, which is the backbone of any health system in the world. It is in shambles. There's no doctors. It's mainly run by, I don't know who runs that. Forget about that. Uh, 16, 17 lakh people, 1.7 million people die because of air pollution. It's still there are rampant corruption in that. No control. Uh, um, India has become the top 10, you know, country uh, cities with the so there is a lot to be done. There is a lot to be done. Uh, uh, we, have, we have learned with the second wave. And I think um, uh, we, have, we are with the government and we are working with the government. Every people, every common Indian citizen and should come forward and to help the government. Mm, there are so much misconception about the vaccine, about the virus. And those awareness program is also needed. We are traveling to the village for the past 50 days and we are finding that in village there is a, a, a misconception like uh, Corona is a scam, is, is some conspiracy by, conspiracy by some foreign um, country like US and China, you know, uh, um, it's because of 5G technology people are dying. Uh, if you take vaccine, you will become impotent. Even if you take vaccine, you will die. So, so many things we have to done, and we are trying to do it. Uh, if we, if we, uh, now they are saying the third wave will hit the children. Uh, we have seen third wave in UK and US, and then, uh, we are we are seeing the fourth wave in Sweden. So we don't have to worry about the waves. Waves will come and go. The corona. The reality is that COVID nineteen. Coronavirus is now as a part of our life, just like influenza virus vaccination we take every year. I think coronavirus vaccination also we have to take every year. Yeah. Am I speaking a lot? No, no. Thank you so I much. Think, very, yeah. very much insightful. And you rightly said that if we fail to prepare, we prepare to fail. It's really we are going to fail if we don't. Uh, we fail to prepare. So any other? Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. So I'll just take one or few questions because there are some patients also waiting for some to hear uh, from you. Uh, uh, Doctor uh, Sharad, Sharad, can you ask the question of the patient that what they want to uh, ask to doctor? Sharad, unmute, unmute. Sharad. Can you, can you unmute? Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Good evening. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Hi. Good evening, sir. Good evening, all. Uh, sir, uh, is that usual that after COVID infection, people will suffer some body pain, sir? Is that usual or, or is it an unusual sign? Uh, no, no, it's a usual sign. I need, even in long COVID also, there can be, uh, for six months, you will have body pain, lethargy, and uh, 
uh, headache and you know especially when you are not uh, um, you have already got some lung infection or myocarditis or something so it's a is usual nothing to worry about the only thing you have to take a lot of water fresh fruit take rest don't do okay. waiting exercise weighing exercise okay uh, you can run okay. you can walk for half an hour but don't do uh, heavy exercises okay sir thank you sir thank you we have khaja khaja nazimuddin from telangana he also wants to have some query about the patients at something khaja good evening all good evening all thank you for joining sir uh, sir main aapse ye puchna chah raha hu ki jaise ki treatment ke andar telangana ke andar ye ho raha hai jab bhi koi patient ko admit kiya jata hai steroid bahut sara istemal kiya jata hai usse unka immunity power kam ho raha most of people those are taken treatment in the house there will be wo dil this cure ho rahe lekin jo hospitalized ho rahe वो भी मोस्ट ऑफ दे आर डेथ स्टेरोटाइप का जहां तक यूज करना सही बात है पहले तो मैं आपके स्टेटमेंट से अग्री भी हूं और डिसएग्री भी क्योंकि आपका जो एक स्टेटमेंट है कि स्टेरॉइड जो है यूज करना जो है वो खतरनाक है अग्री विद यू देयर देयर शुड दे शुड नॉट बी यूज्ड ऑन द फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ कोविड बिकॉज़ वंस यू स्टार्ट यूजिंग स्टेरॉइड कोरोना जो है स्टेरॉइड जो है आपकी इम्यूनिटी को कम करता है और आपने पहले दूसरे दिन से अगर स्टेरॉइड देना स्टार्ट कर दिया तो कोरोना के लिए तो वो लैब है आपकी बॉडी ना तो वो तेजी से रिप्लिकेट करने लगता है इसीलिए जो आईसीएमआर का रिकमेंडेशन है जो डॉक्टर्स बॉडी का रिकमेंडेशन है दैट यू शुड स्टेरॉइड ओनली इन सर्टन केसेस इन एंड आफ्टर ओनली सिक्स डे ऑफ द इलनेस दूसरा जो बात आपने की कि हॉस्पिटल में जाकर मर रहे हैं ये तो बाबा रामदेव वाली बोली हो गई <laughs> समझ गए तो आई वोट अग्री विद दैट जी ठीक है हमने जाने भी बचाई है और आपको बता दूं कि 1200 डॉक्टर भी मर गए हैं ये कोविड 19 ऐसी बीमारी है इस बार सेकेंड वेव जो आया ना वी वी वर नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग इट दैट इट बी इन दो सो इंटेंसिटी एंड टू यू नो किल दोज पीपल हु डोंट हैव कोमार्बिड कंडीशन पीपल वर सो हैप्पी आई आई टेल यू द सो मेनी लाइक वी आर ट्रेवलिंग ऑन रोड एंड वी आर गोइंग टू विलेजेस सम यंगस्टर लाइक टिकटॉक ग्रुप ना यू नो 18 20 साल के लड़के कहते हैं हमें तो कुछ कोरोना होगा ही नहीं हम तो पार्टी करेंगे उनमें से भी कुछ मर गए सो दिस टाइम ऐसा हुआ कि दिस दिस वायरस वाज टोटली दिस इज दिस चेंज ना वायरस इज अ वायरस व्हेनेवर इंफेक्ट एनीवन इट इट टेक द बॉडी एज अ लेबोरेटरी and the way you are trying to protect yourself by using mask uh, medicines and vaccine virus also protect itself by changing its uh, no lethality so ye kehna galat hoga ki jitne hospital mein log gaye wo utne mar gaye aapko bata do ki india mein kareeb kareeb 1.5 crore log corona se infected hue aur usme se 10% log admitted hue yani 15 lakh log admit hue और हमारी डेथ अगर अभी जो गवर्नमेंट डेटा है वो तीन ही लाख है तो उस हिसाब से तो हम लोगों ने बचाए हैं बहुत लोगों को तो ये कहना गलत होगा और ये आपकी बात में एकदम सहमत हूं कि 90 परसेंट पीपल कैन बी क्योर्ड एट होम टेकिंग रेस्ट टेकिंग फ्लूड और टेकिंग पैरेस्टामोल दव आपको आपको खादा साहब बता दू मैं तेलंगाना में आप हैं आपको ये बता दू कि मैं मैंने अभी तक जितने भी कोविड 19 पेशेंट को ट्रीट किया है सिर्फ और सिर्फ पैरासिटामोल दिया है मैंने कोई मल्टीविटामिन आइवरमेक्टिन जो है डॉक्सीसाइक्लिन हाइड्रोक्सीक्लोरोक्विन ये कोई दवा सब यूज नहीं की हाँ जब मुझे लगा कि मैं नहीं इसको हो पा रहा हूँ सेचुरेशन 92 परसेंट से नीचे जा रहा है तो मैंने रिफर कर दिया कि जाइए आप जो है हॉस्पिटल चले जाइए अब वहां पर रेमडेसिविर दिया गया तो सिलोजुमैप दिया गया और जो है फेविक फ्लू दिया गया पर पर आप ये देखिए आइवर मेक्टिन का कहा कितना यूज हो रहा है डब्ल्यू एच ओ तक ने मना किया है तो डॉक्टर्स हैव आल्सो लिमिटेशन दे आर आल्सो ट्राइंग दैट्स अ ट्रायल दैट न्यू डिजीज सो इट्स अ ट्रायल सो वी आर आल्सो ट्राइंग ओके सो डोंट ब्लेम एनी वन थैंक यू वेरी मच सर सभी रास्ते में सभी बहुत सारे मेहनत कर उनकी वजह से अभी म्यूकर म्यूकर माइकोसिस दिस व्हाइट फंगस ब्लैक फंगस एंड 
yellow fungus all came because of the steroid use only thank you sir thank you very much sare doctors bahut acha kaam kar rahe hain thank you ek baat bata dun aapko main ye ek baat ye batana chahta tha yes sir ki abhi jo maine ek ek baat ye kahi na ki आपको ये बता दूं कि हमारी 70 परसेंट ऑफ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन को 74 परसेंट ऑफ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन को प्राइमरी ट्रीटमेंट जो है नॉन मेडिको देते हैं यानी कि आप जिनको झोला छाप और क्वैक कहते हो लेकिन वो क्वैक नहीं है आपको रात में पेट दर्द हो जाए आपको कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो जाए तो वो आपकी जिंदगी बचाते हैं लेकिन वो लोगों ने भी स्टोराइड ज्यादा यूज किया है समझ रहे हैं पहले दिन से तो आप सिर्फ डॉक्टर्स को दोष नहीं नहीं डॉक्टर्स में कभी नहीं बोलना सर वेरी वेल थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच कॉल अपन द रजनी रजनी डू हैव एनी डाउट्स नो रजनी गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर फर्स्ट कोविड-19 ना कटा कहनी सर आफ्टर ना मा ना कोई इधर बाबलो वाल इधर के एफेक्ट हैं इंसर वाल असल के फूड डेम नहीं स्कोले दो ना कुछ ना पढ़ाई थे बागा बाड़ी पेंट्स फूड दिना लन पेंट्स चले दो फीवर टेन डेज वाले की फीवर उन्हीं से इनका ने इंसों ने होम आइसोलेशन लौंडी ट्रीटमेंट दी सुनना नो डेली हेल्थी फूड दी सुनना � पिछले की मात्रम ओनली एंटेंटे एंटीबायोटिक मात्रम है चारो पिछले लक मेडिसिन करेक्ट का लेते हैं अरे करेक्ट टेन डेज टेन डेज आइसोलेशन एंड गुड फूड एंड रेस्ट दैट्स व्हाट आई सेड मैंने भी यही बोला टेन डेज आइसोलेशन ये बता रहे हैं कि इसके फैमिली के अंदर और ही पूरे लोग इफेक्ट हो रहे इनके दो बच्चों को इफेक्टेड हुआ लेकिन इनके बच्चों में जो एंटीबीट दिया जा रहा है वो कंटिन्यूअसली फीवर ही नहीं रहा मगर सिर्फ चेंज कर दिया जा रहा है फिर भी कम नहीं हो रहा अभी भी फीवर तो फीवर में ही बच्चे 15 डेज से ओके इन लोग दोनों को नेगेटिव आ गया लेकिन बच्चों को कम नहीं हो � Three to two to three percent of children affected with that. Uh, in that, the multiple organ will have inflammation, and immediately, especially when the uh, heart and uh, kidney and liver will involve, child can have problem, and that will last for six months. So you'll have mild fever around ninety nine to hundred for uh, more than uh, six months. So if there is multi systemic inflammatory disorder, so you have to investigate for that. You getting my point? Okay, thank you. Sir. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank. You. So would like to ask you something? Can we? Yes. 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 Yeah. Ma'am, with your permission, we are taking you, Dr. Hazina. <laughs> okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, we are good a couple. Evening. We both are a couple who were affected with Don't COVID. call me, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm like your son. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, with due respects. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Like, uh, uh, my husband is Mr. Subramaniam and I am Kaviri. I think Dr. Hazina was referring to ourselves uh, while she was putting her data. What we wanted to tell you was, there were a few things. One is with regard to our COVID experience, in the sense like uh, for nearly a week, as you were suggesting, I put people only on paracetamol. For nearly a week or so, more than that, for right. eight days, I was consistently from day one on acetromycin, vitamin C, vit I mean, uh, zinc COVID, zinc. plus dollar 650 every four, five to six hours. I was rather telling Dr. Zina about it that I had almost more than eighteen dollars uh, six fifty alone, and when I lost stock of dollar six fifty, I switched over to paracetamol. But my fever was never coming down. Every five hours, I was repeatedly getting the fever. So I was like kind of really worried. When it was very very accidental that I, in fact, she was not talking to me about COVID at all. She was messaging me about. Another thing, and uh, when I saw that she was messaging me two, three times, 
I felt I should uh, tell Hazina. her that, yeah, Dr. Hazina, I'm, by her, I am referring to Dr. Hazina. So I felt I should tell her, ma'am, I'm not keeping well, I'm down with COVID. It was then that she immediately referred me to Dr. Ajay Babu. Though I know Dr. Ajay Babu from uh, 2009, uh, unfortunately, I missed calling him. Though I was taking an arsenic album as a preventive for more than one year, both of us. We were taking arsenic album as a preventive for more than one year. And so whether you believe it or not, uh, neither uh, azithromycin or uh, Dolo 650 or paracetamol or anything helped me relieve me of, of, my, of my fever. In between the death also. And uh, like uh, I was finding it very, very difficult to have food. Eating food was a major issue for me. I couldn't eat food. I was having the vomiting sensation. But there was nothing to come out of my body because there was nothing inside. There was nothing coming out of my body, but I used to shrink like the number eight. Why? But I And I used to get the vomiting sensation. I didn't have the strength to even stand up properly or keep my eyes mm, open. Sorry. It was uh, like, and uh, you know, the mental stress we go through is you are isolated from the rest of the world. There is not a soul to come on, check upon you. And that is a different issue. Uh, keep Keeping all those apart. And uh, fortunately, God willing, it is purely God's grace that I happened to respond to her message. And immediately I called sir who responded. And within 10 minutes, he sent across a few medicines to me. Till I can never, never, never forget. I, oh, Dr. Ajay what Kumar. Medicine? I don't know. He gave me the homeopathy medicines. Okay, okay, okay. Carbo edge. So that was okay, what he okay. put me on. He sent me the medicines. He was kind enough to use one of his students. And at the time, we were having the cycle on Tauti or whatever it is. And he was so kind enough to send across a student of his and deliver the medicine <clears> at my house within 10 minutes. I received the medicine. Nice, very nice. Yes, sir, definitely, definitely. We both are indebted to you. Not just this. You don't know our tryst with uh, Dr. Ajay Babu goes back to more than 10 years where he has cured me of so many things. And uh, he has helped me go through a lot of tough times. And it was really uh, surprising how I missed calling him. That is still a mystery to me. So, uh, and on the third day, so I was feeling hungry. All these 10 days, I was hungry. I wanted to eat food, but I couldn't eat food. And I didn't have the energy to cook anything else. But people are telling me, eat, eat, eat. I couldn't even swallow a mouthful of food. It was difficult for me. It's not that I was not hungry. I had taste. I had smell. I had hunger. But I couldn't eat. And on the third day, first day, he gave me the medicine. And the uh, second day, my fever shot up really high. And on the third day, I was rid of the fever completely. It was with the homeopathy nice. medicine. Because for nearly eight to nine days, I was on... A dollar 650, and now I am worried whether this dollar 650 is going to take a toll on my liver. And on all no, these, on the third you. day, sir, I was relieved of my fever. I was relieved of my fever, and on the fourth day, I had a little bit of proper food. The same is the case with my husband. He too was relieved of, he had a little bit of cough. <clears throat> he too was relieved of fever on the fourth day. And so, like, uh, I do not know why this is being promoted or this is not being uh, used. You know, so it's not giving you any other side effect. And it is proven. It is proven on many people like us. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't have any breathing issues. Our oxygen was maintained at 94, 95. And, and I'm sure sir had told me that it is due to the arsenic album we were taking all through as a preventive. It helped us maintain the oxygen. We didn't go into suffocation. But the tiredness we experienced was something which uh, I don't know how to. And you, you also know how it is like uh, with a very high fever. My last fever I reported to him was 104.3. You can imagine how tired I would have been. Yes. yes. So that was uh, so like uh, we sincerely feel, sir, this should be propagated. And the benefit of this medicine no, should be see, extended. See. Every, every, every medicine, every medicine which is going to be given to public on, uh, 
they has to be go undergo trial uh, sure. i don't i don't oppose any any pathy whether it's ayurvedic whether it's allopathic whether it's homeopathic if they have a trial if they have a report if they have used on thousands of people and the results have uh, there's no side effect after 10 years yes yes that why not there should the way you should use uh, we we use some uh, homeopathic medicine in our allopathy that's not the thing and but but about you telling me that uh, paracetamol didn't work for you i will tell you uh, you maybe maybe you are not in that 90% of bracket maybe uh, when we say above 90 or 95 90% will uh, be treated at home 5% will need uh, hospital consultation and 5% will need ICU admission. So maybe you are in that 5% bracket where your fever is, is spiking even after 7 days and subsided at 10th day. Whether you have, would have taken a medicine or not, maybe that fever would have gone by 10 days. So you, you don't know. So the thing is that this all the things are, are on the trial basis. Yeah, so, so you are also on the trial basis, trying... right, sir? You are also not having any concrete record. I'm not trying to contradict allopathy or Yes, anything. yes, 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 yes. Correct. Everybody is on a trial correct. basis. I'm yes, everybody yes, is on yes, a trial correct. basis. So what I sincerely feel is, just as allopathy is given a sincere, uh, I mean, a rather wider approach, I am sure homeopathy can never reach that much. I'm sure you will not have. They will not have that much of access yeah. due to mindset. Even people themselves would block it. But genuinely, they should be given. A track to move on. It should be tried on people. Provide them with access. I am sure there will be people Nobody's, who are willing to. And no one is stopping. No, 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 sir, no, sir, no, no. But nobody is taking forward the medis medication like the way you are trying. No, 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 no. People are taking. Twenty-five lakh people have taken coronal tablet. Yes, Two fifty crore rupees he has has earned. Dr. Um, uh, Baba I just wanted to In share my crore. experience, sir, because yes, I, I owe no, my no, life I'm back just saying, to the medicines I had. Yes, that's, that's good. Ma'am, that's what even I am a pediatrician. I tell you, I tell you, I when children, the, uh, parents complain about cough and cold, I tell them to give milk mixed with haldi, some give some kadha, give uh, steam inhalation. I don't give anything to them for cough and cold. So, you know, the old medicines, uh, the, the, uh, the grandmother, grandparents massage to the children are good. That's good. That, that, that's we have, we have seen the benefits. So uh, no, no branch of medicine, whether it's allopathy, homeopathy, and that's why, that's why when I said, that's why when I said that those 75% of people are under uh, non-medico who are some, they say Bengali doctors or Jura Chab doctors or quacks. But I, I uh, before, you know, before my suspension and before my me going to the jail and seeing all the, uh, the health system of our India, I realized that BRD oxygen tragedy was just a brutal face of our broken health system. These are the people who are actually running the health system. You, if in any village, if something happened, a child is having severe pain, you are having a 103 degree fever, and you, you know, the doctor advised give one injection, who will give? These people are helping you out. No, so no, we should not criticize anyone. Definitely. The only no. thing for me, for me, I always, I always, I know, always based, I always talk and we always follow protocols. I can talk only about those drugs who has undergone trial phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and come out with that, that there is no side effect. Um, I'll tell you, you can go to the net and find out about Dr. Kafil writing about Covaxin. I have written three, four articles, even on international journal also, about that Covaxin should not be uh, uh, start on 16 January and there should be a uh, phase three trial should be on public domain. And now I myself have been inoculated with Covaxin. <laughs> you know, so do you why? Say that, uh, because so would you vouch that why, vaccination? Because, sir, can I why, ask you something? Would, would you vouch that finish. vaccination provides 100% uh, immunity towards uh, coronavirus? Would you vouch no, for that? Who said 100%?
हॉस्पिटल एडमिशन यस आई अग्री दे मे बी गेटिंग कोविड नाइनटीन अगेन even my brother has got both covid shield vaccine is still he got covid 19 so but we are seeing that those people uh, uh, not needing hospitalization and not needing admission i'll tell you ma'am no vaccine is 100% uh, effective no drug is 100% effective we give polio out of 1 lakh person out of 1 lakh babies one child will have polio so for that baby it's 100% so but that polio vaccine is still saving 9 lakh babies 9 lakh 99000 babies we give uh, dpt vaccine some some children will become uh, seizure will have seizure will have seizure disorder mentally retarded for life we give mmr vaccine some children have will have uh, ssc the disease the neurological disease For life long, for how many percentage out of one lakh one maybe? So th- no vaccine is hundred percent same. Same is the case yes. for uh, Indian vaccine. See, we have already given twenty crore people. That that mean two hundred million people have received vaccine in India. And if one thousand people have died, okay, fine. I I I I take. the worst kind of kind of case scenario 1000 people have died but see we have saved 19 crore people 19 crore 99 lakh so that's the that's the side effect every even i agree with you take paracetamol then even even one dose of paracetamol your kidney can fail you know that even no, you're scaring me more sir no you're scaring no, me no i'm telling you no I this whole is a trip of dollar 650 plus paracetamol <laughs> no see people take uh, you, that's that's a rare thing na that's a rare i'm telling i'm that, that, that's a rarity you take paracetamol for life long nothing happen but one pay, one person take a uh, one injection and gone into anaphylactic shock so these are the things that's the medicine life is very unpredictable you that must be i have seen people that that you know people having diabetes people having uh, heart disease people having uh, are old 100 year gone to hospital <laughs> come back and some people have 18 year 20 year old no not smoking is any time and has died because of covid 19 i we have seen the 3 year old child have died थैंक यू फॉर योर टाइम सर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू इट इज वेरी गुड इन साइड इन एट लास्ट आई रिक्वेस्ट यूर इन जनरल सजेशन फॉर अ चाइल्ड हाउ टू टेक द प्रिकॉशन इन दिस क्राइसिस एज वेल एज हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई दैट वॉट इज कोविड एंड वॉट इज नॉन कोविड Because everybody has the same symptom everybody tells that if you are having that cough and fever and all it might be covid but how people in the rural area they can prevent or they can take care of this just in simple way that people can understand uh, see one thing i want to tell everyone who is listening me right now that we have to understand that virus is going to mutate there will be thousands of strain nothing to worry about that uk strain brazilian strain south south african strain bengal strain double mutant triple mutant there will be thousand of mutation and there will be waves now they are saying that the third wave is going to affect children how they are predicting their astrologer no But the only thing that is on the first wave we have seen only 5% of children got affected the second wave 20% the so pattern with the pattern they are saying because 80% of children are naive the new body because children have a strongest immunity so virus will discover something that will penetrate that is strong immunity that's the scary thing rather scary thing is that that you guys are doctor you know that how many pediatrician we have all over india only 32% 32000 and uh, pediatricians are there 
and children are not miniature adult their body is totally different you can't give 650 mg of dolo to any child you have to give according to the weight according to the uh, illness then we don't have pediatric ventilator in india only two three uh, companies they make pediatric ventilator you go to any hospital any hospital in uh, even in metros bangalore delhi and all any big hospital will have eight to, to 10 bed uh, pediatric icu so we don't have pediatric icu and the last we don't have uh, vaccine for the children so that's the worry about the thing so for uh, parents i would just tell please give your child influenza vaccine because influenza vaccine will have 60 to 80 percent of protection with a common cold uh, that's we are we are no we are, we have confusing with the covid 19 have similar symptom i have seen in during my village visits the children will have only conjunctivitis the redness of eye and when we do rt pcr is become positive some children will have just vomiting they will become positive some children will have just loose stool diarrhea they are positive so children's and um, skin rash is very common fever is less not very high fever they they won't be able to complain of sore throat they will just have the small children will have drooling of saliva or maybe uh, feeding difficulty so what i am trying to tell you that these symptoms are very vague get your child vaccinated with influenza vaccine get your child give your child balanced food nutritious food to increase the immunity Who, which are these food fruits are the fresh fruits don't go for complan burn vita and all those uh, market product give health, homemade food healthy food fresh fruit if you don't give every day apple change one day you give apple one day you give uh, you know banana one day you give uh, pineapple you change them because every fruits have different benefits then give dry fruits put if you can afford butter and like uh, ghee use a lot of ghee and butter you know especially the uh, if you can't afford you can use coconut oil coconut oil has medium chain triglyceride which increases the immunity and then uh, the three pores the oral and nose and eyes these are the three pores the, where the virus goes inside the body so and children has a habit they, they most of the children have as it put the finger on nose put a finger on mouth rub their eyes every time so from now onwards tell your child every time they do don't put finger on nose no 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 this is bad habit bad habit bad habit so if you train them from, you know they will take four to six months tell your visitor not to come to your home for next one year you know give them fresh air try them you know breathing exercise you know they can't do but at least tell them hold their breath first as long as they can do, you know that's the best exercise if they can do it you know wearing mask is very difficult for those children who are less than five years so what we have to do hand hygiene and not putting the put a uh, hand on the face and the most uh, somebody was asking na, about the uh, multi-systemic inflammatory disorder if your child is having fever of more than 10 days consult your pediatrician immediately maybe child is having multi-systemic inflammatory disorder and for the uh, village people we are uh, we recommend you know uh, homemade olives like take 100 gram of gram 100 gram of ground nut 100 gram of any lentils you know roast it and uh, crushed it make it like a powder keep it in a uh, airtight container mix with uh, uh, milk put some oil or ghee and serve every day two three times that will increase because a lot of protein lot of minerals lot of vitamins that we can do 
and most important thing nothing to worry about no the more you take tension on your mind na this virus will kill you more so children have a, uh, have a oh, one minute children have a strongest immunity so we are just predicting that third wave will be like that you have to prepare and we have seen this in second wave then 30 year 35 year 40 year guys have been killed you know and post covid also they have myocarditis and all so that's all we just precaution there is no medicine for for me i i i believe that till now there is no medicine we have for against the corona whatever remdesivir tocilizumab fabiflu and all those drugs they are still on trial paracetamol i give for fever not for corona thank you thank you doctor i i know that you are very busy and you have to leave also so at last there are many uh, medical students also watching this uh, yes this. yes let let them ask question yeah, yeah. so if any medical students those who are willing to ask doctor then uh, at last he can answer because you people are also helping other people and trying to learn new things and how to handle the uh, this difficult situation and he is already doing so we, it's open for you all dr rachita archana asthana you if you have questions you can ask anyway this is uh, i think that they don't have any questions so we'll just take them later on and thank you so much doctor i we have another doctor specialist from uae dr hafiz i want to just hear from you that you know as dr kafil has suggested and you were handling the infant baby and all so how to take care to those cases those who are pregnant or they are newborn babies in those those scenario that how to differentiate between the child and the newborn baby in this pandemic situation how to take care is there any special care to be taken especially for the for the mother or the newborn baby or they are the same thing that precautions and all the things um thank you dr shad uh, should i go through my slides or sh shall we just have a chat uh, yeah, we can we can just discuss uh, openly and then we can yeah, also okay, no problem no problem later on we can yeah I, in terms of what happens in newborn that's very uh, my that's my specialty uh, I, i have to before i make my pitch i have to say uh, ever since i left india i worked in resource rich countries and tertiary care So first of all, I have to say a big salute to all of you working on the front line and struggling it out there. I can't even imagine what you guys are going through, uh, like Dr. Kafil, Dr. Asina, my sister, and everybody else facing people out there, severely ill patients, people dying. Uh, fortunately, we are quite protected here, so I won't even pretend to understand what's going on on the ground there. But in terms of what to do for newborn infants, there are various aspects of it. so there are babies who are born to mothers who may be covid positive which is a big big deal for a lot of women uh and there are babies who might be exposed to covid after they are born we need to differentiate those two so for babies born to mothers who are covid positive one thing which our mothers do is protect us from the time we are in their womb so when mothers pregnant women get covid there's a lot going on for them they get paranoid and it's true that pregnant women become more sick compared to normal women with covid but majority of them are mild or asymptomatic so for babies born to mothers with covid the first thing to say is uh, we should not separate the mother and baby when this first when the pandemic first started people were completely panicking and they were kind of trying to extrapolate data from other sars epidemics like the mers cov sars cov where mothers were dying Uh, up to forty percent more chance of dying compared to normal women. They said the mothers and babies should be separated. Uh, data which has evolved over the last one and a half years since the pandemic broke, including the study which we published, have kind of cemented the fact that babies are largely protected, especially the mother got COVID at least fourteen days before delivery. She's passing on her antibodies to the baby, protecting her. And there was some concern that breast milk might transmit. That's all disproven now. Breast milk. 
does contain viral particles, but it also contains so many things fighting the virus. So breastfeeding is a must in these babies. Don't stop breastfeeding. If the mother is separated because she's sick and in an ICU, the nurses and doctors should encourage them to express the breast milk and send it to the baby. So breastfeeding is paramount, not only for COVID, for, for a lot of things. Dr. Kafil, who's a pediatrician, would tell, bread and butter of pediatrics is breastfeeding. There's not, no medicine more powerful than that, especially for the newborn infant. So that is one. The other thing to say is um, if a mother has symptoms and, of COVID, how do you look after the infant? So this is just common sense. Like, yes, um, if mother's coughing and spluttering, she, she can be shedding the virus. Though she's protecting the infant, the infants can catch it off the mother, especially if she's got it late in pregnancy, just a few days before delivery or just after delivery. Under such circumstances, what we suggest is the mother and baby should be kept together, but when the mother is not breastfeeding, they should be at least kept at least six feet apart. The six feet rule of social distancing applies here as well. And in places like India, where we, won't, we may not have that luxury in villages in the rural areas, where the rooms are small, multiple family members are sharing a room. What we would suggest is some sort of physical barrier, at least like a curtain between the mother and the baby, and the, the mother is not nursing the baby. That would be quite helpful. And when she is nursing the baby, respiratory hygiene. Not everybody in the rural communities will have access to fancy masks, even a cloth covering of the face, good hand hygiene, and breast hygiene as well. Just washing your breast in between feeds and good hygiene will prevent, protect infants to a large extent. Uh, does that answer your question, Dr. Siddiqui? Yes, Yes, doctor. There was one more question. Doctor Kafil has replied uh, in the chat box, and if you want to have something on that as well, that will be great help. Uh, okay, I, I think Doctor Kafil's kind of reiterated what I was saying, uh, and as we said, wear a mask, wash your hands, clean your breast, and feed. Don't stop breastfeeding, even if mother's COVID positive. Uh, and that's one thing which will protect the baby against problems. I'll ask I'll ask few questions from the, uh, the audience that you know people. There are many uh, people they wanted to ask the question. Khaja and Sharath, uh, do you have any question from your participants that those who wanted to hear from doctor? Yes, sir, there is a one phobia, there is a third way uh, in most people affected and the children. Uh, how could we uh, uh, increase the immunity power of the children nowadays? There is a phobia, the third way most of people affected and children only. Is it correct, sir? That is one. Sorry, could you repeat the question? In third way, most of people are affected on children only. Is it correct, sir? That is. There are some predictions, as Dr. Kafil said, that could be the case as the virus is changing. This virus, viruses by nature, that's what they do. They mutate in the community and kind of get a foothold in wider population. Eventually, children will start getting affected, like influenza. Children are not spared. But as Dr. Kafil said, children generally are not affected that severely. And most of them just get mild cold-like symptoms, maybe a mild cough, maybe a fever. But yes, children can fall sick as well. There are some who are falling sick in this pandemic, in the second wave especially. And also one of the syndromes which Dr. Kafir mentioned, which is an immunological reaction to the virus, the multisystem inflammatory syndrome post-COVID, that can happen. Um, but it's not that most of the patients are children. Children can get affected more than in the first or second wave, which is true, which can happen. But it's just following common sense, a good nutrition, taking adequate care, and also seeking medical help in a timely manner. That's what is needed. Rather than kind of denying that this virus exists and denying that children can fall ill. Children can fall ill most of the time. It's just good primary health care, just a bit of paracetamol, good nutrition, rest is all they need. And if things are not going well, yes, uh, kind of do seek medical help. Dr. Hafiz, I have one question. I was just thinking that when you were talking about a child, newborn baby, what should the precaution should be taken care by mother, you know, especially those who are pregnant and those who are 
going to deliver babies what are the in this especially in the, there are two aspects about the health uh, for general health and another mental stress so how yes. do we tackle both of the things together in this crisis absolutely uh, i'm sure that dashleen will be talking more later about the mental health aspects of this pandemic um in fact if i can give an example i'm actually dealing with somebody a relative here a young lady uh she was pregnant she was hoping to have a normal delivery uh she's here in abu dhabi her parents are supposed to come home at the time of delivery and all of a sudden and her husband was abroad working somewhere else at the time she developed severe pregnancy and used hypertension and suddenly she is rushed to the hospital admitted and she and as luck would have it on the third day she's diagnosed with covid after she's delivered a preterm baby and she's shipped off to another hospital and the baby stuck in one hospital the impact of this is huge so i think the virus uh, what we miss in this pandemic as dr ariel uh, kind of referred to in the beginning the mental health aspects are just coming to the fore now it's affecting across the population spectrum across the age spectrum this is not normal for anyone so i think building a mental resilience uh during the course of pregnancy having a wide social support circle in place um kind of deciding before if your partner cannot be there is there another birthing partner you can have with you putting that support in place before is one aspect the other thing is common sense really what happened in india is common sense went out of the window from the government and from the population so corona is here to stay as dr kapil said so masking in public places social distancing avoiding big gatherings especially for pregnant women because i can see a question there from uh, afreen ahmed saying uh, death cases more in pregnant ladies it is true there's been a large us registry study which has said uh, which has said the chance of death compared to non pregnant women and pregnant women so if a pregnant woman catches covid and a non pregnant woman catches covid the chance of death is 70% higher in the pregnant woman though the death rate as a proportion of everyone who catches it is quite small the odds are higher for a pregnant woman simply because the physiology is changed during pregnancy pregnancy is an immunosuppressed immunomodulated state where your body kind of suppresses immunity to tolerate a foreign body which is used as a baby so you catch infections more easily your tummy is big so your breathing is hampered so you should be extra careful not to catch this we have seen mothers end up on ventilators Uh, we've had maternal deaths in abu dhabi as well and i'm sure it's happening in india so basically social distancing avoiding large gatherings maintaining your health good social support uh and good hand hygiene is what i would say uh and if you develop symptoms seek help early rather than sitting at home uh if you develop breathing difficulties and a lot of things you can do at home monitoring your oxygen saturation i'm sure things are stretched in india at the moment so though things are getting better so seek help early because pregnant women when they deteriorate they deteriorate rapidly so that's something which they need to think about if they develop symptoms don't ignore it and seek medical help in india uh, because of uh, covid 19 is 70% of deliveries are happening at home so uh, because of i have a data which says in 2020 1.5 lakh people uh, have died because of covid-19 and around uh, uh, 10 million people have died because of non corona diseases so Absolutely. because of they have ignored totally the opds are shut down and the hospitals have refused to take non covid uh, patients Um, this is tragic and especially the pregnant ladies are um, really getting a hard time you know yeah so right now the, uh, yeah the, 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 the in india that uh, the gynecologist bodies have uh, you know they said that postponed the planned pregnancies for some time uh, that's so scary yeah. yeah i think the other healthcare Uh, other diseases have been a collateral damage in this pandemic world over including pregnancy care cancer care heart diseases all of them yeah. not neglected because the medical system has been under so much pressure not just in india even in western societies like the uk us uh, even in europe it, it was completely stretched and a lot of people were dying from non covid causes and that's not accounted for just yet uh, i'm sure dr adel might have more data on that 
but yes, it's unfortunately, it's one of the collateral damages from this pandemic. And this uh, this mental trauma, you know, uh, I have written one uh, article on shadow. That mental stress is one shadow pandemic. You know, it's killing more people. You know, uh, I, I like uh, I am I am witnessing all those children because the schools are closed. Especially the, those teenagers, uh, eight years, ten years, twelve years, they are fighting with their parents. They are throwing things. Uh, they have a science of anxiety and depression and so many things, but there's no one is there to talk to them. And uh, you no, know, they are getting beaten by you know their parents because they also don't understand what is happening. Uh, it's very scary situation, and I, I think uh, this is the uh, second collateral damage uh, after this uh, you no know, death. Uh, COVID Corona is doing to the general population. Yeah, that's true. Speaking to my psychiatrist friends world over, they're seeing at least a 30 to 40 percent increase in psychiatric admissions during the pandemic because of suicide attempts, because of depression, because of self harm. So it is it is under recognized. I'm sure Dr. Dashleen will shed more light on what's happening on, the, on in the Indian scenario on that. Yeah, one more question we have seen that uh, Dr. Rachita, she is also a medical student. She wanted to know something about the clinical features of multi-system inflammatory uh, syndrome. So anyone if can just reply on that, please. Dr. Kafil, do you want to answer that or shall I? Oh, you can again. <laughs> so multi-system is exactly that. Um, it's If you remember, initially this presence like Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki, it's similar, but different in the sense it's Im immune mediated, but it happens even in younger children. So it's more than one system affected. It could be respiratory, cardiovascular, abdomen, neurology, any of those. Then unremitting fever uh, with uh, no obvious cause and raised inflammatory markers. So there are certain criteria. So you first have to have fever, that's the first and foremost, and at least two systems affected and with no other obvious explanations. You have to rule out other causes. The most important is a history of having COVID couple, at least two weeks before or exposure because children might not present with acute symptoms in the acute phase. They might pass off as a common cold and people won't even realize that this child had COVID. And two weeks later, they become very sick. Sometimes they come in shock because their heart muscles are affected. So they can develop myocarditis, myocarditis they can develop coronary aneurysms, they can develop en encephalopathy and seizures. They can develop acute gastrointestinal symptoms and respiratory problems as well. So this can happen in term uh, in infants as well. There is uh, it's the short form for this in children's um, multisystem inflammatory disorder in children. Now they're extrapolating it to babies called multisystem inflammatory syndrome in neonates (MISN). Interestingly, one of the earliest reports was from uh, the Amrita Institute, one of my friends working there. She reported, she and her colleagues reported that in the Lancet. So this is very interesting. A baby came on in the third week or so with acute collapse, with no obvious explanation. But when they went into the history, the mother had suffered from COVID two weeks before delivery. And what happened is the mother probably passed on her antibodies to the baby, and that created havoc uh, in the baby's immune system and present with a multi-system disorder. So yes, it can happen across the spectrum. Initially, it was thought it doesn't happen in infants. Now the WHO definition is anyone below 19 years can get this from zero to 19 years. So yes, it can affect children across the age spectrum. Anything to add, Dr. Kafil, on that? Yes, yes, you're right. I, I don't have to add. So it's thank you. Nice. Thank you, Dr. Hafiz and Dr. Kafil. Uh, I'll just take uh, Dr. Dasleen because now we have talk, talked about lots of health and uh, remedies and other things, but we are still left about the mental stress and other things, especially focused to the rural Indians. How we how they tackle it in this kind of situation, Dr. Dasleen? I think you're muted, Dr. Dasleen. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I just hope you are staying safe. In
can you hear me yes you are audible you are audible yes. i just hope you all are staying safe and healthy during this pandemic and today i'm here to talk about how to cope up stress and anxiety in during this covid pandemic as we all know the uh, the corona virus pandemic has presented us with unique and competitive situation so hello yes 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 please go ahead doctor please go ahead can you help me yes yes you are audible please okay, okay. Okay, okay, sir. As we all know, little stressor is helpful. It acts as a motivator. We become self isolated, but when stressor becomes to a next level, it it has negative impact on our mental and physical health. So today, I'm here to discuss how to cope up our anxiety and stress level. Before talking about how to cope up, I would like to give you the definition of what is stressor and what is anxiety. Stressor it is due to some external cause. and anxiety it is specific response to a stressor and stressor is due to some external and uh, anxiety is due to some internal object stressor subsides when the situation is resolved but in uh, anxiety doesn't so i would like to tell you few tricks how can we cope up with the anxiety first of all there is a box breathing it's a box breathing technique we have to breathe through our nose for Uh, four times then hold the breath four times for count of four then inhale through your mouth then again hold your breath for four times repeat this for four um hello i think there is some internet error no no issue uh, we are we are listening you we are listening okay sir can you hear me sir Yes, yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Okay, sir. We all, we all have physical, emotional, and environmental impacts like economic changes, job loss, financial concerns, separating and distancing from financial, uh, from family and friends, uncertainty, heightened anxiety, grief, worry triggers anxiety that is informed by stressor. and now i'll tell you how can we respond to pandemic as there is no real way to deal with the what's happening or manage our emotions as this is new with everyone we don't know how to cope up with this situation but here are some this is an extraordinary large situation this has never ha happened in our lifetime Um, now i tell you it's okay to feel sad it's okay to feel angry it's okay to feel fearful it's okay feelings are normal feelings are wonderful feeling if we are feeling something it means we are thinking now our main focus is what we should think we should shift our negative thinking to positive thinking it's called embracing your feelings instead of um we should get um we should get informed about what's happening in our uh, in our surroundings but we should not get overloaded with the false information although it's very tempting to read newspapers switching on television on waking up but this is not the right way first of all we should focus on ourselves we should go um can you hear me yes yes you are audible okay first of all i would like to suggest you you should start your day well although it is very tempting to read newspapers switching on your mobile phones or television but we should stay, start our day with simple mindful exercises it will keep our mind calm three exercises it will take less than a minute first of all when you wake up from bed concentrate on the things you can see the sounds you can hear like sound of car singing bird notice the things you can you can feel attached with your body for example bed sheets pillows etc keep planning positive routines adapting and creative positive routines go for a uh, go for a walk do yoga listen soothing music connect with your family and friends release good moments help to release stress 
stay informed but not overloaded constantly exposing to fear inducing news can have bad impact on our mental health managing your social media and latest updates try to limit your time i give you few, uh, hello please please go ahead i give you few tricks to manage stress at home with art activities like crafting soothing music playing instrumental uh, things taking photos rearranging them these are the few things we can do okay so i think that at last uh, i'll ask uh, the audience and the participants that do, if they, do they have any question then we can ask dr dasilin anybody from the participants any specific question okay so in chat box can i ask one question yes yes please please yes sir. like uh, what about uh, these uh, two years uh, three years children like their schools are closed and fighting you know <laughs> that's why about i mask about my kid you know it's very hard to explain them uh, they want to go out and first of all we should ensure them they are safe yeah hello first of all in, ensure them they are safe they are in a safe environment with they are staying with their parents secondly we should uh, talk about the situation what is happening because many a times they uh, they uh, heard in the that is not accurate they misinterpret the things because it's not the accurate age to understand what's happening around them we should spend know, time them although the schools are closed but many schools are running online classes we should engage them with these things make a proper schedule we should spend a healthy time with them and encourage to do creativities okay thank you ah uh, dr shahid I, i have to leave now because okay. i have another meeting actually it was 7640 yeah yeah you were already late uh, uh, i just i just i just want to tell everyone uh, thank you for inviting me uh, i didn't expect this but so beautiful and dr hafiz ibrahim i, I got so much thing uh, dr darshleen dr hasina um, everyone thank you dr ariel i have i could not hear you but i will watch the uh, video again once i get the time dr mohammad shab uh, and everyone um, uh, dr shahid i i want to uh, appeal everyone if uh, every uh, like we are doing one doctor son road initiative yeah. and we are going to village uh, and we are distributing mask thermometer soap medicines uh, and other equipment so if anybody uh, uh, you know um, wants to donate i would put the link uh, in this advocacy uh, 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 and if anybody yeah, yes Yes, yes. Please, thank you. Yeah, Doctor Kapil, Thanks, thank you so much, and uh, definitely it was a pleasure to have you here. And lots of insights, lots of things. We are creating a pool of doctors, those who are really doing the groundwork, especially for the rural India. So we will create a pool of doctors. We will create a WhatsApp group also, very closely, you know, to interact, to share, and uh, support each other. So if you permit, then definitely all the speakers will. join invite them there to discuss each other and help each other and uh, inform each other so that will be like you know on your consent only so thank you so much once yes, again sir, yes sir okay sir hi dr kafi the honor was asked to have you a share this platform with you uh, heard so much about you and your struggles uh, to keep your head above water and deliver the patient care you're delivering in extreme cases of adversity well done and best of luck thank you thank you i am still suspended i is already 4 years and you know yeah it's, it's a travel but uh, my, 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 my zeal and enthusiasm is because the, the love and you know respect i get from the public the, the way, wherever i go the, those villages and the, those uh, you know rural areas and, and the people they give me so much love and respect that i forget about those uh, misery uh, please pray for me um my family is little scared uh, uh, especially my mother and my wife uh, things are because uh, for the past 4 uh, years in 3 years i was in jail only you know four times i have been in prison 
mean, uh, charged with National Security Act (NSA) and uh, you know, I was beaten and not given food and so many things. I said, life is tough, and somebody has to speak. Somebody has to tell the you know uh, the uh, deficiencies that where you are lacking. Somebody has to speak. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. I, I have I have given the link uh, there. Uh, yes. Please, if you can uh, do a uh, bit. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Sir, it was very uh, it was our pleasure to have him here. And now we proceed that we have. Uh, one more last doctor shahbaz he was also in the last session so we'll request him to take the few question at last because we don't have much time now to go and he has i think 10 to 15 minutes that he, he can wrap it up some brief and the very very simple way that how the ruler india can protect themselves how they can uh, be ready for uh, this kind of crisis how they can survive being in ruler india so simply that you know people can understand Uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Shahid. Uh, I would like to thank our uh, senior doctors, Dr. Hafiz, Dr. Hasina, Dr. Uh, Kafir, and uh, Dr. Ariella once again. Uh, actually, uh, we are ready to. Uh, uh, hello? Yeah, please, please. We are we doctors are ready to help in rural areas if uh, if there anyone is COVID patient uh, we are ready uh, actually uh, uh, I would like to uh, share my some uh, I have written my article uh, for a rural uh, area. Uh, we, which was which was about uh, uh, food that food which uh, can increase our immunity that are easily available in market in this pandemic uh, the food which is uh, rich in vitamin uh, c and the food which which is uh, rich in vitamin uh, sorry rich in zinc uh, for example uh, food that will complete your daily requirement, uh, which is uh, a 90 milligram uh, vitamin C for an adult. Uh, uh, for example, half ambla is equivalent to 90 milligram vitamin C is daily required. And uh, uh, some other examples uh, that uh, which uh, will uh, uh, which will uh, uh, cover the requirement uh, of vitamin C that are uh, Shimla Miraj. Uh, I'm, I will uh, just uh, simplify it. it. It's Shimla Miraj, uh, which uh, 100 gram, yeah, Gawa 100 cap gram, black Shimla Miraj. Dr. Just I added it. Capsicum yeah. is the Shimla Miraj. Capsicum. Yeah. 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 I am just simplifying it uh, for the villagers. Yeah, it, it was for uh, the area. Like Methi. Yeah, methi, methi is uh, uh, 100 gram methi, which is equivalent to 90 uh, milligram vitamin C. And then kelly, kelly is a uh, uh, green leafy uh, vegetable. Uh, kiwi, 100 gram, lemon, uh, 1.5 in uh, um, one and a half uh, uh, lemon. And then lychee, 100 gram, papaya, 100 gram orange 100 gram and uh, potato which is uh, available available everywhere in uh, villages a potato is uh, 150 uh, gram is equivalent to vitamin uh, 90 milligram vitamin c then food which are rich in uh, zinc which will complete your daily requirement uh, which is uh, uh, 12 milligram uh, uh, leg th these foods are legumes 100 gram seeds nuts milk products uh, cheese uh, 50 gram eggs whole grain uh, yeah whole grain which is white rice uh, white rice oats and then dark chocolate uh, this is a, a list which i have made for uh, villagers 
in the last i would like to thank my seniors doctors thank you thank you so much uh, sarvaj it was very simple to understand at least for the rural people those who are listening here so at last yeah. it, it, it's about wrapping up uh, the the session now so i would like to have last two three words that what they want to suggest or anything in mind i'll just start with dr ariel if you want to just convey to the rural indians and those who are affected in this crisis so any last two words yes thank you i'd like to say um thank you to all of the panelists and all the people that have been here today and when it comes to children and youth remember that they are people too they have feelings they also have fears and it's really important that in this time that we have that we do everything that we can to i won't say work together but figure out how to be together as a family and um encourage them to talk about their thoughts and feelings and try to give as much possible um assurances that you can thank you dr ariel dr hafiz i would like to hear from you that uh, we could not get much time you know for the presentation but anyway we were very much delighted to have such kind of very important information from you so any two words that you want to suggest us uh, before we leave uh, in terms of what's happening this pandemic the most important thing is common sense so stay safe wear a mask social distancing and get vaccinated i know there are a lot of vaccine hesitancy if you have the opportunity get vaccinated countries which have high vaccination rates are already opening up and able to tackle the pandemic much more effectively so those are those are my last words thank you thank you doctor thank you dr hafiz dr hasina now the homeopath expert that we wanted to have this kind of remedies you know which is available in the uh, rural area areas as well so uh, the, with your perspective because i remember that when i was in class 10th i had one chapter in hindi sarva chikitsa padhati that was the chapter to take all those good parts of all the pathies and create one new pathy which can be complete package so some was somebody some writer had the dream this kind of is there any pathy which can be 100% uh, uh, full proof so I, we can't see because if allopathy is somewhere they have limitation then allopathy the homeopathy has something limitation like that ayurveda also have some limitation so this kind of thing that you know you suggested and something how we can just help our rural indians in this case and what are the simple things that from your perspective that they can benefit yeah as uh, i i would like to disagree with uh, dr kafil when he said that we need a 10 year trial to prove uh, the efficacy of your medicine uh, the sad catastrophe in our country is we don't have a protocol for homeopathy under icm or any other research bodies to conduct a research with the protocols existing protocols so we should be allowed and uh, tried on the people to see that it is effective because we are also coming after five and a half years of study and internship and we are in the profession for 28 years and we have thousands of cases thousands of people who are depending on it so, uh, it is 100% proven that it has no side effects if used cautiously not cautiously with according to the principles so what i can offer is from our uh, studies which we have con conducted all uh, throughout my life we can give preventive medicines in conjunction with the vaccination in conjunction with all the uh, modalities that you are taking and see if we can just what do you call flatten the curve even a little bit if the study can be taken up by msf or any of the authorized bodies and we are ready to pitch in give medicines from our own Uh, what do you call we are ready to finance the whole thing in rural india from my institution that's the offer we can give at the most and see what happens because there's nothing that you're going to lose by giving homeopathy because it's 100 percent safe and there's no side effects at all if used according to the principle again i say there are uh, just as kafil dr kafil said there are quacks and there are people like even my teacher she was uh, she's also a doctor and as you see i got into pneumonia so there are people so conduct studies under registered medical practitioners under academic institutions delhi you have a college every state has a homeopathic medical college conduct it under the guidance of their proficient teachers there in the hospitals there uh, i i would say that uh, take all of us together and see what we can do because at this point we are helpless so why not try this system which has been here for 2 to 50 years and it's still not been validated around the world so 
uh, I disagree with that uh, thing with Dr. Tafil said that you have to have a trial and see that it is, doesn't have side effects. There's no time for that in this, what do you call, perilous times. So why not try it and let this be a, what do you call, beginning to integrate all the systems. Like in Pondicherry and Tamil Nadu, the government has orders where they are allowed to give medicines and it's under one, one umbrella. All the uh, clinics are under one, one umbrella and they, can, uh, they have that uh, collaboration between the systems, Ayurveda, homeopathy and allopathy. So it's not there in other states, especially in Kerala, the homeopath, uh, homeopathic uh, community is being used in the CFLTs for just nursing activities, like going for the rounds and uh, just dispensing the medicines. They're not allowed to give, uh, treat COVID patients. I'm just fortunate that I'm not in the government sector and I have all freedom under my institution and uh, proof is there that I've given. That's just 15 cases that I've given. There are more hundreds of cases which has got cured with COVID. And again, when Dr. Kafil said the fever would have passed on the 10th day, how can that be said? <laughs> and because you see the Kaveri, she was suffering so much from it. Third day, the fever goes uh, with our medicine and he says, it's it's natural. This this the same thing my brother half is used to say 25 years ago. Now he'll disagree with that because he's seen it. He's seen it in my family. He's seen it everywhere. And I know he refers anything that uh, doesn't come uh, into his purview to me. And I refer everything that doesn't come in my purview to him. So if we have this collaboration, as I said, on the worldwide community, everything can be done. That's my take. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. It's very insightful. Dr. Dasleen, now you are the expert of mental stress and uh, the people, those who are going through, especially even they are fit and fine, but they are under depression. So what do you say about that? So first of all, it's my humble request to remove stigma regarding mental illness. We should support people, those who are having mental illness, because mind is also important thing. We, we should care about it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sahbaj. That uh, over to you, the last but not the least. Dr. Shahbaz. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, last two words. What are you asking? The last suggestion, what you want to give? Because you have written in the chat. So can you suggest the rural Indians the last two words that what they should do, what we should take care? Yeah. Uh, I, I have suggested that uh, if uh, anyone is a COVID positive, then he should avoid uh, fried fruits, preserved foods, junk foods, uh, soft drinks, and uh, spicy food. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we are uh, at the last minute of uh, our you. session. And it's very, very, we are very thankful to all the speakers here on the short notice, especially Dr. Hafiz, Dr. Hasina, Dr. Ariel. And Dr. Kapil, uh, it, it was our honor. Excuse me, to have... excuse me, excuse me Mr. Uh, Dr. Shakid. Yes, yes, please. Uh, uh, I am basically a finance person uh, having a professional qualification, Madam Accounting. Okay. And uh, I was in the, in the treatment of Dr. Ajay Babu. Mm -hmm. uh, so, my experience basically, I'm a very logical, I approach things very logically. I'm your husband. Uh, so, I am Kaveri's husband, and uh, we went through a very traumatic experience. Uh, with five days, nothing is happening. And in fact, the uh, uh, day before my very close friend died, who is 45 years old, just having uh, this uh, COVID. So, I was mentally preparing what is going to happen to me. So, that kind of serious stress was there. So, uh, and uh, see, what I want to say is that one thing is your medical approach, whatever may be homeopathy or whatever it is. But it is very, very important for a country like India to spend at least 5% of GDP on healthcare. So it is high time that the medical fraternity joins together and uh, make a joint declaration, at least in the budget, when you're spending some 20%, 19%, 15% for ideal assets for defense. Okay. So it is high time that uh, we pitch in, say, uh, 
uh, get a commitment, a very strong commitment from the government, whichever is ruling in the center, to spend at least five to six percent of GDP on uh, you know, on healthcare, with very clear what you call emergency healthcare, and uh, there should be a white paper a disclosure in the parliament. Saying that what kind of primary uh, health centers are coming up, cropping up, so the visibility should also be there, will be there, should be there. So it is not only committing the money and the value for money audit or value for money, how this money is being spent. And the second thing is when I came and when I don't remember the doctor's name, so much time is taken for your tender processing. This is a typical problem in accounting, whereby you have that uh, what do you call the same process of calling for tenders, uh, taking approvals, bureaucratic processes. So how the bureaucratic process should be unshackled in this kind of pandemic? It's also, now it's also it's not late. So uh, there are cases where people are booked wrongly. There are cases where uh, things can, delay is very, very fatal. Delay, delay in taking decisions, financial decisions. We may pay something extra, but, uh, uh, but this kind of delay is definitely avoidable. So you cannot have the same process what you have in your uh, in your summer days. Now it is a stormy days when your uh, staple is catching fire. Now you uh, ask you to whatever is there in your rescue, whether it is when uh, when things are proven, when Dr. Hazina is very clearly saying that in the, as a pro medical professional, uh, as a finance professional, I experienced it. Uh, this uh, effectiveness of medicine, yeah, there should be some very clear, uh, this one uh, mental unblocking uh, that has happened. That has hit me. We may hypnotize, I will say, with uh, a lot of medicine. So that kind of unblocking should also happen amongst you to try different uh, different medicines that can be used along with your uh, your systems also. So that mental block unblocking should be there. That should happen, and uh, there should be a kind of a system to give mental support in the school system also, whereby uh, mental support systems can be given to students. It is not only what do you call uh, during pandemic only we react so we forget about this mental health when uh, everything is okay so you should be some kind of moral we had some kind of moral science when i was studying in san Jose high school uh, this there was a period called moral science which was very helpful because basically i am also a lawyer uh, so uh, uh, kind of a knowledge of constitution kind of knowledge of your rights <laughs> so your rights and it is our fundamental right that we should get a Definite budget allocation of five percent of GDP, minimum five percent of GDP, or uh, how we are going to address this ratio, doctors to patient ratio, one to fifty-one thousand is very alarming. This is a news for me. So how we are going to address these fundamental issues? How we are going to? Uh, so this is the things which uh, one thing is uh, COVID attack and attack for COVID, but as a collective fraternity, we should be addressed. Say five percent should be for GDP for health services. So that is high time you should take it to the government. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It is a very valid point, and at last you have raised. And we are also trying to bring all those like-minded doctors and the activists together, so they Thank should talk me. about it, and they can mm -hmm. demand about it, and so we can help other people Join those who are voiceless. So that is very important. We are doing all together, and we need all support, not only from the doctors, also from the people those who are struggling and those who are facing in a different form. So it can be like you know. Uh, nurse, it can be like you know other uh, person those who are practicing, but they are not qualified as a doctor, but they are helping in, in this crisis. So we want to have everyone say here that you know to save the many many lives together. Thank you so much once again, and we'll meet again hopefully next week or within ten days with the different doctors, different topics. Definitely, thank you so much. Thanks again. Have a nice. Wish you good luck, sir. Thank you. 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 Th